Tag TV brings you daily news bulletin from India. Breaking news and views from India. You're watching South Asia Newsline and here are the top stories we're tracking for you on Monday the 21st of August. PM Modi to attend BRICS Summit with expansion, Africa engagement as key focus. Pakistan President reveals he didn't assent controversial army and secrets bill. And devotees in India and Nepal worship snakes to mark Nag Panchmi. And now for all the details. Indian Prime Minister Narendra Modi will embark on a visit to Johannesburg on Tuesday to attend the 15th BRICS summit that will kick off the same day. Foreign Secretary Vinay Quatra informed on Monday. Prospective new members have been invited to the summit that will focus on the bloc's expansion, among other issues. The two-day event will be the first in-person BRICS summit since 2019. Apart from the discussion on issues including economic cooperation and food security, PM Modi is expected to underscore the need for member states to respect each other's security interest. There will also be a series of bilateral meetings following which the Prime Minister will head to Greece for his maiden visit. How the partnership with Africa can actually shape and contribute to the development of the Global South will figure as one of the items, important items, in the deliberations on 24th. You are all aware of India's own views and efforts in this regard, which were very clearly and in detail reflected in the Voice of Global South Summit that was hosted by the Honorable Prime Minister in January earlier this year. And countdown has begun for India's ambitious lunar mission Chandrayaan-3. Our spacecraft is just two days away from the moon's south pole, officials have said. The Indian Space Research Organization is bidding to make a successful soft landing on the moon, making India the fourth country in the world to achieve the feat, followed by the US, Russia and China. If Israel pulls this mission, India will be the first country in the world to land the moon's unexplored South Pole. It has been more than a month since the Israel launched the Chandrayaan-3 mission. The Israel released fresh images of the moon captured by LHDAC on Monday. Chandrayaan-3 is the Israel's follow-up attempt after the previous one faced challenges during its soft landing on the lunar surface in 2019 and was eventually deemed to have failed its core mission objectives. I saw it uh, this time, it's a very, very, very anxious moment. Everybody is working, I mean, uh, looking it very anxiously for this event to happen. And uh, I am sure that this time it will be a grand success. Well, in a major turn of events, Pakistan's president, Arif Alvi, on Sunday revealed he had refused to give assent to official secrets bill 2023 and the Pakistan Army Bill 2023 passed by the National Assembly during the last days of Shehbaz Sharif administration. Taking to microblogging site X, Alvi said he had asked his staff to return the bill unsigned to make them ineffective. However, his staff undermined his decision. Under Pakistan's constitution, if the bill is not returned within 10 days, it becomes a law. Notably, former Prime Minister Imran Khan and Foreign Minister Shah Mahmood Qureshi were recently booked and arrested under the Official Secrets Act for disclosing the contents of the diplomatic cipher for political gains. Following the revelation by President Alvi, PTI has said it will approach the Supreme Court over the bill signing controversy. Meanwhile, Christian residents in Pakistan kept up with Sunday prayer services days after a Muslim mob vandalized several churches and scores of houses over blasphemy allegations. A report. Christian residents in Pakistan's Faisalabad kept up with prayer services on Sunday, days after a Muslim mob vandalized and torched several churches and scores of houses in Jaranwala area, accusing two men living there for desecrating the Quran. Police stepped up security, standing guard as a congregation gathered in a makeshift area outside their vandalized church. A resident said a Muslim religious delegation also visited the church, which had been burnt down, and offered their mosques to Christians as places of prayer and worship. We 
مسجد تو آپ کے لیے کھلے ہیں یہ کھلے ہمیں مسجد نہیں ہمیں یہ بس روڈ پہ آج عبادت کرنے دیں The duo accused of blasphemy was arrested on Friday, while the police have also arrested more than 100 others for involvement in the violence. The incident has again put a spotlight on Pakistan's draconian blasphemy law, which critics blame is often misused against minorities to settle personal scores. <laughs> Moving on, the UNC Militarian Coordinator for Afghanistan, Daniel Endres, has claimed that 38 aid workers were killed in the last two years, and most of them were polio vaccinators and deminers in Afghanistan. Despite the lack of funding for humanitarian aid in Afghanistan, UN employees provided humanitarian aid to more than 26 million people across the country last year. Meanwhile, Taliban spokesman Zabiullah Mujahid rejected the claims of Endris and said that the aid workers in Afghanistan have the support of the Islamic Emirate. Mujahid said the West is adamant in presenting Afghanistan as an unsafe region. Some humanitarian officials and diplomats have warned of a potential decline in funding to the war-ravaged nation due to the Taliban restrictions on female workers and donor governments assessing competing global crises and economic priorities. And Bangladesh Foreign Minister Abdul Momin on Sunday termed India a mature democracy and said if New Delhi takes a decision regarding regional stability and security, it will be helpful for everyone, news agency UNB reported. The remarks from Momin came after local media reports suggested India has conveyed to the United States that destabilizing the Sheikh Hasina administration by Washington is not positive for overall security of the South Asia region. In recent days, the U.S. has been in at loggerheads with PM Sheikh Hasina's administration, which it claims has maintained tight control since coming to power in 2009 by cracking down on free speech, suppressing dissent and jailing critics. However, her government has denied the accusation and has deemed the repeated remarks as interference in internal affairs. And devotees in India and Nepal celebrated Nag Panchmi, a festival dedicated to the snakes. On this day, devotees venerate the snake god as part of a custom that has been passed down the generations. Take a look. Hindu devotees across India on Monday offered prayers to the serpent god and offered milk to snakes as they marked the Nag Panchmi festival celebrated on the fifth day of the fortnight leading to the full moon during the monsoon month of Shravan. Priests at Sri Mahakaleshwar Temple in Ujjain bathed the Shivalingam with ash before placing the idol of Sheshnag or serpent god in the temple as a huge crowd of devotees witnessed the ritual. On this day, worshippers observe a fast throughout the day and there is a general belief that feeding milk to snakes rids people of their problems. People also avoid ploughing or digging the earth on this auspicious occasion as it could harm and anger the snakes which reside underneath. Nag Devata ko jal chahate ki humari khetu ki rakshha karte hain aur anasa kharitte hain tamam tarikhe ka amlo khansar manate hain aas se jo hai. In neighboring Nepal, devotees flocked Nag Pokhari, a pond dedicated to the serpent deity in Kathmandu's Nagzal area to offer prayers and perform rituals. The pond next to the former royal palace in the heart of the capital bears a brass idol of the serpent deity worshipped by devotees who pray for protection. Special offerings of dubo grass, flour and rice grains mixed with red vermilion powder along with milk, sweets and fruits were also offered on the occasion. The festival is followed by a religious belief that hanging a picture of a serpent in the house will avert any harm from snakes and scorpions as well as from the incidents of fire and lightning. Uh, well, that's all in tonight's edition. It's the same time tomorrow. Good night. Tag TV brings you daily news bulletin from India. Breaking news and views from India.